Hi students, a very good afternoon to everybody right there. Welcome to the very session. My name is Preksha Sharma, your English educator at An Academy, and I give you all a very warm welcome, everyone. Hi everybody, welcome to the very session. How are you all doing, guys? Today we are going to do one of the very interesting poems, and this is something really fun as well to read about. All right, and I'm sure that everyone is going to like the given poem. Alrighty, so guys, kindly stay tuned for the entire session. Don't go anywhere. Make sure you guys are going to listen to me very carefully because I am going to cover the entire thing in this particular poem. I am going to cover the theme, the setting, the title, all right, the very meaning of the poem along with the analysis of it. Okay, so make sure you are staying tuned for the entire session. Alright, don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, hi Shavi, hi guys, hello everyone. Welcome to the worry session. So what are we going to do? We are going to deal with the poem, The Tale of Custer the Dragon and stanza wise explanation is going to be there with a minty quest right at the end. Okay, so everyone stay tuned. Alright people. Okay, moving ahead, my name is Preksha Sharma. I've done masters in English from Delhi University. I've been guiding a lot of my students to be like super duper amazing in their communication skills and to score good marks in their academics. I'm sure that you guys are going to be held the right manner. And we have got the Telegram channel. Everybody kindly join this Telegram channel because herein you'll be getting the updates related to all the upcoming sessions. Do not miss out anything. Hey Prakriti. Rakriti, hey Chetanya, okay, you're Akshay, hi Ravan, hello everyone, hi Anshika, I'm very well, hey Siali, I'm very good, thank you so much. Now coming to your free classes everyone, live real time interaction using chat and emojis would be there, ask the questions using the question tab, live poll options for quiz would be there and poll leaderboard, compete with your friends as well. So this is going to be an amazing thing for everyone today, stay tuned. And now I'm going to share the very uh, timetable of special class for everybody, I mean, yes. Yesterday we had a class on you know, Madam Writes a Verse. We did all the questions, the extra questions. And today, and not today, I mean tomorrow we at 8 p.m. I'm going to deal with Let's Crack the Tale of Custer the Dragon. All right, use the code PSH10 to enroll the class. The class is already defined. Then on 22nd, we are going to deal with the questions, the NCRT questions of making of a scientist. Kindly use the code PSH10 and then on 23rd we are going to have a mega poll on grammar for Tom 2. So everybody stay tuned for everything. Do not at all try to miss out anything. Okay, you all can ask me the questions for sure. Hey Deepa, hi. Hi and hello to everybody right there. Hey Harshita. Now we are beginning with the tale of Custard the Dragon by Ogden, uh, by Ogden Nash. Okay, stanza wise explanation would be there. And everybody, before I go ahead, would you please try to tell me what exactly the given poem is all about? Do you have the explanation? Hey Nishi, hi. Hi Harshita. So do you have any idea what is given in this given poem? Anybody? Once again, I'm pretty well now. Uh, like earlier, I had bad throat. Now I've got cold. But I am trying to be fine with it. Okay. So it's it's going well. Okay, Nishi. I hope that uh, you are doing good. All right. Hey, Zed. Yes, of course. I do remember you. Hi. So everyone, come on. Tell me what is given in this poem. Do you have any idea? Have you read it before? Did you understand it before? What exactly is being given here? Any idea? Anybody? Yes, hey Dinesh, hi dear girl and her soft toy, you know, imagination as a pet, okay. It's about a dragon and his courage in the end, okay, all right. Hey Priya, hi, yeah, it's a ballet, very right, it's a ballad. All right, that's particularly the right thing that we are doing. Hypocrisy, that is also right, the poem is about a pet dragon whose name is Custard, all right, okay. All righty people, Shubham, would you please stop talking among yourself, I mean, uh, would you just please stop spamming in the class? And the coward dragon has defeated the pirate. Very good. Belinda and her pets. Okay. Hemant, her pets. Okay, everybody. So, let's move ahead. First, we are going to know that what exactly the poet is. I have always been saying this in all my sessions related to the poems that know about the poet. Okay. You never know where exactly you may need to have the information regarding the poet. All right. You need to have the information about the poet. The reason being that somewhere you can just relate your answers with the poster. Okay. In the value-based questions especially, you'd never know that uh, you may need it. All right, so keep it in your mind. It's about custom dragon, which is called to be covered, but later proved his bravery. Yeah, Harshita, you're right about that. All right. Yeah, Ayush, this poem is definitely in your syllabus. Okay. 
so we see that Ogden Nash, all right, he was uh, like born in the year 1902 and he died in the year 1971. He is an American poet who is known for humorous poetry. Humorous, what do you mean by that? Humorous means funny poetry. That is what he is known for. And this very particular poem, that is the uh, the tale of uh, Custard the Dragon. That means the story of Custard, okay? Custard is the name of a dragon, okay so this particular poem is actually a funny poem it's a ballad okay what do you mean by ballad priya congratulations good it's a ballad guys what do you understand by the ballad can you please let me know about this what do you mean by ballad can anyone tell me ballad is basically a kind of a poem or you can say a story which is being narrated in very short stanzas so in this poem you will see 13 stanzas which are very very short okay so that is why it is known as uh ballad okay is that clear to everyone yeah bhavya menti is going to be at the last right group of dears no a poetry see the, uh, let me come to that okay before that let me tell you all that it's a humorous story kindly keep that in your mind and he has written over 500 pieces of light verse what do you mean by light verse light verse is basically referred to a poem which is not talking about any major thing okay which is not talking about any tough subject which is not talking about anything which seems Seems to be very big all right it talks about funny things all right so he has returned the things which are quite funny and which gi gives an uh, ease to your mind when you are reading it now he has returned over okay this is what i meant already okay now moving ahead everyone so what do we see that what exactly is the setting of this poem which is very important to understand the poem is set where is it set everybody the poem is set in a white house very important the setting is always important because it gives you an idea like where exactly the scene is taking place or where exactly the poet had imagined a particular thing all right and then telling us a story is that making sense to everybody right so the poem is set in a white house where a little girl named belinda lives with her pets that is the setting okay are you all understanding that it's a white house where there is a little girl that means a small girl by the name belinda and she is living with her pets that is what we see here yes ballad i'm coming to that don't worry about that so we see that Belinda has got a kitten, there is a mouse, there is a dog and a dragon. So she has got some pets and what are the names of those pets? I mean what are those pets? They are a kitten, a mouse, a dog and a dragon and they have a red wagon. What do you mean by wagon? Wagon is a vehicle carrying a lot of things, right? Okay, Saman Dhone Wala, uh, uh, basically vehicle. Is that clear to everybody about a little girl Belinda who owns many pets namely a black kitten named Ank? Yeah, you are right about that Neharika. So you have given it very right thing. Okay. And now they all live happily. And they used to play with each other. They made fun of the dragon because he was a coward. Coward refers to a person who is not brave. All right that is what like who lacks courage coward is a person who lacks courage so all the pets that is a kitten a mouse okay a dog okay what do they do and belinda also they make fun of dragon why because they consider dragon to be a coward a, a coward a, 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 a an animal who doesn't have courage who is not brave is that clear to everyone yes is that clear to everybody Yes, yeah, so please remember that what exactly is the setting because that really is very important. Okay, so it is a vehicle like wagon basically refers to guys wagon is basically a vehicle. Okay, it's a vehicle which is used for what it is used for transporting. Okay, goods that means Samand Hone Wala Ek uh, Yantra. Okay, Samand Hone Wala Ek Aisa Sa Matlab Kaar Jaisi Cheez Jis Mein Aap Samand Daloge Aur Aap Ek Jagah Se Dousri Jagah Usko Leke Jaoge Alright, that is what a wagon is So it's a vehicle which is used in order to or do what? In order to carry the goods from one place to another Alright, hey Kor uh, Korvi, hi Peekaboo, I'm very well Alright, so now we see that it is What exactly do we see? It is happy 
setting okay so what kind of a setting it is this is the question it's a happy setting till a pirate comes and the dragon bravely bravely kills the pirate who is a pirate anybody give me the meaning in the comment section who is a pirate who is a pirate everyone give me the meaning of the term pirate now not a difficult word everybody Anybody? Yes, hey Anushka, my name is Priksha. See, so a pirate is basically a person, alright? A pirate is basically a person, okay? Who do, who does what? Like who robs and attacks ships, okay? So that is what a pirate is. So like everything was going good. Sabkuch bahut achche se chal raha tha and everything was very happy. Like every everybody was very happy also. Sab log bahut khush the. So till now the setting was very much happy. Okay, but till the time pirate comes, only till then it was happy. So वहाँ पे एक ऐसा इंसान आता है जो समुद्री सी में as in like समुद्री जहाज में attack करता है. Okay, and some action is seen in the poem. So there seems to be an action which is going on in the poem. You'll see that. And after this episode again life resumes as earlier this is what the setting is like once the incident is over the life is again the same all right that is the fun thing that was going on earlier like making fun of dragon that was again the same that's what we are gonna see a knight who was covered according to a myth yeah corby in this very particular that is a myth but when you're being asked the meaning of pirate in your poem you're going to get the correct meaning that uh, pirate is basically a person who robs and attacks ships all right is that clear now, what is the title? We always need to justify the title. The title introduces us to a dragon whose name is Custer. It prepares us for a humorous tale. Alright, so basically the title is introducing us to a dragon. Alright, and the name of the dragon is Custer. I've written it in like inverted comma, one single inverted comma in order to specify the name. Whenever you need to highlight something when you're writing in a sentence, you put it in one single inverted comma and do not put it in double inverted commas. Double inverted commas, they are only for the quotes. That means the things that have been spoken by someone. So, what does it prepare us for? It prepare us for a humorous tale. A funny story. Tale means story. Keep that in your mind. Is that clear? Is that clear, everybody? Now, we are moving towards the theme. What is the theme, everyone? This poem is a whimsical fantasy. Very important. Very important, guys. This poem is a whimsical fantasy. What do you mean by whimsical? What do you mean by it basically means it's a fanciful or it's a playful. Okay, this is a fantasy. This is not something real. As I told you that Ogden Nash, he used to write the humorous stories. So again, this particular story is a whimsical fantasy. That means it's a playful fantasy, something which is not real. Only the playful, like herein, we are basically talking about a playful ad, which is basically to amuse us, okay, to make us happy. Amuse means when we want to make you happy, right? So a girl named Belinda lives with her pets in a small house and the main theme is appearance. This is very important. The very first thing that I am here talking about. The main theme is appearance versus reality. What does that mean? That what appears to be at the outer surface may not be the reality. So there is a difference. And what is that? There is a difference between what is real and what is not real. Okay, so appearance is like what you only see and reality is that what is actually behind that appearance. Everybody considers in this poem the dragon to be a coward. But the cow, but the only coward uh, custard, like the only coward dragon that everybody considers to be of no use, appears to be the one who is literally going to help everybody when a pirate attacks the ship. All right, is that clear, everybody? Yes, is that clear? So now what do we see next? Next we all see that the pets who appeared courageous, like now the very first thing that you need to see in this poem is that the pets who appeared very courageous turned out to be the real cowards. 
So you will see when the poem will unfold, you will see that the pets who are living with Belinda know they are like they boast a lot about themselves. I can do this, I can do that, right? But when the situation really comes, when they had to face a particular dangerous situation, they were all hiding. They were all saving themselves, okay? They just went away from the situation and they were not coming forward to help at all, okay? So, when there's a crisis, so they were the real uh, cowards when there was a crisis, when there was a problem, okay? The dragon who was made fun of for his cowardice, that means for his lack of courage and bravery, is the bravest of them all. Okay, and fearlessly he faces the bullet shots. Okay, bullet basically refers to the gunshot. Here we are talking about of the pirate and eats him up. So, this is the main reality of appearance versus what? Reality. Okay, is that clear? Then we see the other pets praise him for some time but start giving explanations for their behavior. So, now they start defending, sorry, now they start defending their behavior. Why did they hide and how would they have reacted, uh, reacted in that particular situation? Sorry, how would have they reacted if they would have been the dragon? Okay, so they also claim that they had been there in the dragon's place. They would have behaved more courageously. So, this shows the hypocrite nature. Okay, the hypocrite nature of those animals. So guys, this very particular poem has been given in your slavers. There is no particular motive behind it. Instead, it is just uh, talking about some of the important aspects in terms of teaching you that there has always been a difference between the appearance and the reality. A book mustn't be judged by its cover. Okay, that is what it is here talking about. All right. So, the other very aspect of this poem is just to create the amusing effect. That's it. That means amusing is like the very funny effect. Clear everybody? Yeah. Yes, Corvi. Now, we see what is the second theme. Dusri theme kya hai? That is hypocrisy. Okay, what is hypocrisy? Doglapan. That is having two faces, being double faced. So, in the last stanza, we see that nothing has changed even after the dragon has proved his bravery. Semicolon, others continue to make fun of him. So, this is what hypocrisy is. Instead of actually being uh, like praising him and uh, like uh, 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 praising him and uh, saying a lot of good things for his bravery, he was being like considered as a coward only right at the end also so those people they are really hypocrite they have got two faces all right that is what it is so kindly keep that in your mind all right kindly keep that in your mind is that making sense is that clear right is that clear is that clear everybody are you all getting what did i tell you all is there any confusion so far in the setting title and theme all these things are very important like before going into the poem directly you should be understanding all these things so perfectly clear okay so now we are starting with these stanzas there are 13 stanzas guys it's a ballad what do you mean by ballad it's a ballad ballad is basically a poem okay or a story okay narrated in short stanzas all right narrated in short stanzas so herein the poem has been narrated in total 13 stanzas and they are very short stanzas that is why it's a ballad all right people so now we are beginning with the very first stanza which says belinda lived in a little white house with a black a little black kitten and a little gray mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon you have to remember every detail every detail where is the article a uh, has been used where is the article the has been used what is the color of the dog what is the color of the wagon and a real truly little pet dragon wagon okay so now here i've given the meaning of the wagon it's a vehicle used for transporting goods or another specified uh, purpose all right people now let's see what exactly is the meaning i hope that you have read the stanza clearly all right yeah corby you're right about that okay you're very right about that creative karthik i have already shared the setting of the poem i think that you have joined the session a bit later dear i request you to please check the session later on all right you'll come to know about it 
Now I'm coming to everything, okay? Just coming to everything. The poet says that once there was a little girl named Belinda, okay? And she lived in a little white house. And she lived with some creatures who were her pets. And what are those pets? There is a black kitten. There is a grey mouse. There is a yellow dog. There is a little red wagon. And a creature that the poet says was really and truly a dragon. Okay. So the meaning of realio is meaning really. Alright. And trulio means truly. Keep that in your mind. It's important. Okay, so this is how we are doing the meaning here and we are done. Keep that in your mind. The, the color of the dog is yellow. The color of the wagon is red. Okay, and now they see. How is that being said? And a really, truly little pet dragon. And really and truly little pet dragon. Okay, is that clear everyone? Is that clear? Yeah, Gabru, I am very right. Thank you so much. Now coming to the literary devices. This is very important people. Just keep listening to me carefully. What is the rhyme scheme that we see? Rhyme scheme is very important. It is A-A-B-B, -B, house and mouse, wagon and dragon. So this is A-A-B-B -B, and this is what is running in the entire poem. So just keep that in your mind. Then there is a repetition. Where do we see that? Use of the word little. Just let's go back to it. Here you see it. Uh, yeah. So here the word little. Okay. That has been repeated. Let me just encircle it for all of you. Here is the word little. Okay. Then there is little again. 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 Little again. Okay, so the word little has been repeated. Why? Okay, why has that been repeated? In order to show the effect that everyone is small. Okay, we are just dealing with the pets which are very small. All right, and the girl in whose house everybody is living is also small. So what do we see? That it's a small girl who is living with her pets. Is that clear? Is that clear to everyone, Mohinder? I share the meaning of the wagon. It is basically a vehicle which is used for transporting goods. All right. Or another specified thing. So, basically transporting goods from one place to another. Is that clear? Yes, everyone. Everybody, yes? Alrighty. Okay. I'm very well, guys. I'm very well. What is happening with my voice? I think you all can hear me so clearly. Why did poet take really as really and truly as truly? A very good question. The, I'm, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Okay. So repetition. Here the word little has been repeated. So repetition is something that can happen anywhere in one stanza. It can be at the beginning. It can be in the middle. It can be at the end. Okay. Don't confuse it with anaphora. Now, oxymoron is there. Use of the two words with uh, opposite meanings. Pet dragon. You know, guys, you know, dragon is huge. Okay? And pet. What do you mean by if I'm saying that I've got a pet animal at home. Like you can have a dog which is a puppy and you can have a full grown dog as well. Which, is, which will again remain a pet. But like keeping a dragon is completely impossible as your pet. Okay, so this is oxymoron that dragon refers to something huge. All right, very big. And you can never have like huge things as pet. All right, that is why it's an oxymoron. All right, and now moving ahead, enough for our repeated use of the word at the start of the two consecutive lines. And a little and a really. So, what is the repetition that we see here, everybody? The repetition is and a, and a. Alright, this is what I told you. Whenever there is a repetition right at the beginning of the lines and that too consecutively, it is always anaphora. Alright, now refrain. What is refrain? Repetition of a sentence again and again. Alrighty, so here what do we see, guys? Here it says and a real you. Oh, and true. No, 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 no. Just a minute, guys, guys. Just a minute. Okay, here we see. Uh, and a really and a truly. Okay, okay. All right, people. So here is basically we are talking about the repetition of a sentence, like wherein it just says, and a little yellow dog, and a little red dragon, and a really true little pet dragon. So when there is a repetition that's going on continuously, no, and a little, then and a little. Okay, so basically here I am talking about and a little and a little. This is what your refrain is. 
okay this is not really or truly and a little and and a little okay it has been repeated twice so that is what your refrain is is that clear to everybody right there now coming to your poetic license really and truly for real and true the spellings have been changed to create a musical effect this is the reason guys really and truly it is not any word all right this is something known as poetic license what do you mean by poetic license for example me being a writer all right i am writing something okay and i have got a right to include any word that i wish to do okay but you are not supposed to change it for example uh, this particular poem has been taken up in your syllabus okay it has been originally written by ogden nash so now ncrt cannot at all change this word in your syllabus because it has got no meaning why because the author himself had the uh, sorry the author himself had the right okay to change it so this really and truly oh that has been used in your given poem for the meanings really and truly just to create a musical effect in your poem that's it this is what you have to keep in your mind all right yes yes rushti you're right about that is that clear is that clear to everybody no 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 gps anaphora is the repetition of the words or phrases in the beginning okay and that too in the consecutive lines okay in the consecutive lines that means one after the other but refrain it's a repetition of a sentence again and again it can be in the middle of the stanza or at the end of the stanza anywhere there is no link of consecutivity in the case of refrain is that clear now we are going to move ahead to next stanza now the name of the little now the has been used earlier a uh, you know earlier it was a kitten now we are referring it to as the the little uh, black kitten was ing and the little gray mouse she was called sorry she called him bling she here refers to your belinda all righty now and the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard and that but the dragon was a coward and she called him custard so you see the names when you guys are going to write this in your uh, answer sheets all these names since they are now the proper nouns and they are the names of the animals you have to write them in the capital letters okay so mustard what does that mean a yellow colored flower and coward is a weakling weakling basically means a weak animal all right which lacks courage all right is not brave not brave this is what you have to keep in your mind is that clear is that clear moving ahead so the poet explains the name of all the animals that are now named okay by belinda he he says the name of black kitten is ink all right uh, this has been written in a wrong manner okay the name of the uh, bla uh sorry the name of the black kitten is ink the name of gray mouse is bling and the little yellow dog had yellow color and so she called him mustard and the dragon that was a coward means was a weakling was also custard simple coming to your literary devices rhyme scheme is same again ink blink mustard custard simile is there dog compared to mustard that means the little yellow dog was as sharp as mustard that means in the color the in in terms of the color we are here talking about that the color of the dog is compared to that of the mustard okay sarso sarso is basically yellow in color is that clear blink there is no meaning to it this is just a name that's being given all right alliteration is there coward and she called him custard so c sound you see then anaphora is there repeated use of a word at the start of two consecutive lines and the little gray and the little yellow okay so this has been repeated okay in the consecutive lines and repetition is again there in the word little keep that in your mind now irony is like when you are talking about something opposite for example there is a chapter or letter to god okay if you have read it in your 10th i mean that was in your term one so a letter to god was something which was never being sent okay we we do not know the address of the uh, god in order to send the letter to god so that is ironical okay like you need to say something else you are saying something else when you are saying something opposite of what should be said that is ironical is that clear yes corby stanza three everybody custard now there is the description 
all right there is that description of custard which you all will have to remember correctly custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath mouth like a fireplace chimney for a nose and really or truly or daggers on his toes okay spikes what do you mean by that thin pointed surface like the way you see here okay they are the thin pointed surface that is known as the spikes then scales thin bony plates protecting the skin of fish and reptiles so that is the hair you see the scales all right and now underneath situated directly below so this is the underneath area and fireplace an outdoor structure of brick stone or metal for an open fire that is what fireplace is wherein you can produce the fire so the very mouth of the dragon okay it was known as a fireplace okay and chimney for a nose chimney means like when you are burning fire so through chimney chimney is what is chimney can you please tell me can you please tell me Rhyming scheme is same. It's A A B B only. It's A A B B throughout the given poem. Okay. What is chimney, everybody? From where smoke is released out? Yes, Ananya, you are right about that. For snow protection, what snow protection? No, no, no. See, chimney is like it is basically a pipe from where the smoke just goes out. all right so now the mouth is that the place where the fire is there but the very nose is from where the smoke comes out that is what it says and dagger is a sharp knife all right now we see the poet describes the dragon that it had big sharp teeth and spikes on top you have to remember it all right it's very important to write the answers in your examination then this means that its skin was pointed on the top all right on the lower part it had scales which were bony plates to protect the skin and his mouth has been compared to a fireplace very important because it is assumed that dragons can release fire from the mouth okay because there is an assumption that dragons like even in the movies we must have seen and uh, even his nose is compared to a chimney which is used to pass out smoke and his feet are like a sharp knife that is dagger now let's see what all other literary devices okay no no nose is not compared to a uh, chimney like basically see what did i mention here nose is come okay yeah sorry a uh, nose is compared to a chimney which is basically used to uh, used for passing out the smoke but the mouth is compared to the fireplace all right is that making sense to everybody yes guys is that clear yes clear okay all right people okay this is bony plates basically refers to the lower part okay in in your fishes also in the reptiles basically we see that which protects them from getting harmed all right that is what it is now let's have a look at the literary devices rhyme scheme is again same teeth underneath nose and toes all right and metaphor right i'm coming to that okay i'm coming to that the simile is dragon's mouth is compared with fireplace mouth like a fireplace okay and see here we have got refrain repetition of a sentence again and again and a really truly all right this has been repeated and metaphor is there chimney for a nose the nose is like a chimney is that clear to everybody is that clear to everyone now let's move ahead to the next stanza belinda was as brave as a barrel full of beers now here comes the very bravery thing everybody is talking about what that belinda was as brave as a barrel full of beers and ink and blink chased lions down the stars mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage and mud custard cried for a night nice safe cage so everybody here what do we see the meaning is so clear the comparison has been mean like you see that ink and blink like mouse and like kitten they have been like compared to that of uh, the very uh, sorry they have been compared to uh, sorry they have been uh, informed here as uh, as chasing the very tigers okay or the uh, basically the people that we are here talking about which are so very much courageous okay here we go 
we see so now the poet to explain the inner strength or the bravery of various characters of the poem he says that belinda was as brave as a group of bears which is really stupid she was a real uh, sorry she was a little girl and ink and blink was so brave that they could hunt lions chasing okay that means that they can hunt lions which is really a stupidity so here he has shown what here comes the analysis okay so what has he shown here he has shown the bravery of the kitten and the little mouse that could hunt even a lion so the dog was very brave like an angry tiger but to contrast all of them was custard so like all of them they were very brave as compared to custard why because custard the dragon was not brave he was so afraid of everything that he always demanded a safe cage all right barrel here means we are talking about the group of beers okay yeah it is basically a wooden container but when we say barrel full of beers that means that we are basically talking about a group of beers that is what we are talking about refrain no shina refrain is not alliteration alliteration is the repetition of the consonant sounds right at the beginning of the words which are closely connected with each other okay are you understanding for example uh, like if i am saying that silent shikha okay so here sns that is alliteration okay but if i am uh, talking about refrain refrain is the repetition of a sentence okay repetition of a sentence that is what refrain is bears is like bhalu okay right right priya you are very right about that okay now moving ahead literary devices rhyme scheme again same alliteration belinda was as brave as a barrel b b b and b okay b sound is there that is alliteration Similarly, uh, Belinda's bravery is compared to that of barrel full of bears. Okay, Mustard's bravery is compared to that of an angry tiger. All right, and Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage. So that is what simile. When simile is when we are comparing by using the terms like or as. That is what simile is. Now we have assonance. It's a use of vowel sound. That is the repetition of the vowel sound in be in between the words. Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears. so we have got a lot of a's here all right which is just creating the sound all right and is the dominant sound so what is assonance okay yes assonance is basically the repetition of the vowel sounds in between the words never at the beginning it can be in between or at the end now stanza 5 belinda tickled him she tickled him unmerciful okay in blink and muster they rudely called him percival they all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the trilio trulio cowardly dragon all right so tickle means stroke here it means to tease okay and here this is literally important that everybody used to tease him for him being coward unmerciful is like very cruel and percival is basically a knight in king arthur's court all right why so this very particular night in the king arthur's court he was a coward so from there comes here that uh, here basically from there we are uh, making an illusion here in this particular poem okay is that making sense to everyone yes now let's move ahead belinda used to stroke the dragon in a very cruel way that means she used to tease Okay, Ink Blink and Mustard made fun of him by comparing him to knight named Percival, who was thought to be brave but ran away due to lack of courage. So, guys, this very particular, uh, uh, I mean, this very particular dragon, he was there in the court of King Arthur. Okay, and he was supposed like everybody used to consider him to be really very courageous and brave, but he ran away. Why? Because he didn't have the courage. Okay, and they used to tease the dragon by sitting in their little red wagon. That is where they are sitting. So, guys, what do we see? Just an amusing effect is there. All right, you may not find the reason of what exactly is happening, but it is just all very much amusing. Always stroke is as a marna, okay, like that, okay. Ah, uh, Shaina, the very ah, uh, ah, uh, the very animal custard is being teased. The reason being that is just a like a, a fun game that they have got. They consider him to be weird, okay. They consider him to be a coward, somebody who really lacks courage. All right, yes. 
okay rhyme scheme a a b b refrain again repetition again we see and a really or truly all right here we now see that this is again seen in the poem then illusion is there this is what i told you illusion is what when we are taking some reference from any other source so now we are taking a reference from percival percival is basically referring to a coward person personification is there ink blink and mustard they rudely called him percival all right so now this is what you all will have to keep in your in your mind like when we are attributing the human like qualities okay to an animal that is where comes the personification because percival he was a, a human and here the dragon being called percival means that here we are referring the human like qualities to this person all right is that clear Percival Ananya, I told you, you why you not listening to me? There, Percival basically refers to a person. Sorry, it basically refers to a person who is uh, sorry. He was a knight, okay, in the court of King Arthur, and there, in like everybody used to consider him to be very brave, to be very courageous, but he turned out to be a very coward person because he ran away. All right. Yeah, during what time? Very good, Rushdie. You are right about that. Not demanding, ma'am. Basically, demand. Okay, GPS. That means demanding only. Okay, that means the demand only. Like crying for safe cage means that he was always in the demand of a safe cage. Moving ahead, next stanza. Belinda giggled till she shook the house and blinked. Said weak, which is giggling for a mouse. Indian master rudely asked his age when Custer cried for a nice safe cage. Giggle is to laugh, okay, and weak is here. It's the sound made by the mouse. All right, that is like blink was making the uh, sound, okay. So the poet says that Belinda used to laugh so loudly that her voice echoed in the house. Now, what do you mean by echo? Like she shook the house. Basically, means that the voice echoed in the house. All right, blink the mouse used to uh, blink the mouse used to laugh and make a sound of weak. Okay, that is just the. Uh, name of the sound. On the other hand, ink and mustard would tease him by asking the dragon his age whenever he used to demand for a nice safe cage. So you know, like at times, uh, like for example, if somebody is asking you something which seems to be a bit kiddish, you are like, are you kid? What is your age? So that is what is happening here. कि तेरी age क्या है कि तू एक safe cage मांग रहा है बार बार, okay? तो तू अपनी age बताएगा like that. All right, let's look at the literary devices, everybody. Niharika, because they used to think that he is a coward. He is not brave. He always keeps on demanding for a safe cage. He doesn't have the courage, okay, to be out. That is why they used to make fun of him. That being a dragon who does possess these many qualities and should have be a bit fierce is really asking for a cage that he wants to be in a prison. He wants to be in a safe prison. Okay, that is what it is. Yes, yes, uh, Ananya, you're right about that. All right, good afternoon, Sanya. Literary devices, rhyme scheme, so clear. Again, uh, the same thing. Onomatopoeia is there. Usage of the sound words to create a dramatic effect. So, what is onomatopoeia? Onomatopoeia is the figure of uh, speech which talks about the sound. Okay, the sound word that has been used in any poem or any chapter. So here we have got the sound in order to create a dramatic effect. And what is that? Giggle. Okay, and weak. Now repetition, Custer cries for a nice safe cage. So there is that repetition again that he is crying for a safe cage. Is that clear? Yes, Ananya, you are right about that. All right, I hope that's making sense to everybody. Let's move ahead now. What does it talk about? Yeah, stanza seven. Suddenly, suddenly they heard a nasty sound, and Mustard growled, and they all looked around. Meow! cried Ink, and who cried Belinda? For there was a pirate climbing in the window. Okay, so you see, nasty means bad or uh, unpleasant, and growl basically means barking. Again, a sound. Pirate is a person who robs ships in the sea, and winda it is used for wind. So the word winda has been used again a poetic license in order to create the rhyme scheme so perfectly. All right, here we go. Center assonance is the repetition of the vowel sound in between the words. Okay, when you see a e i o u, the this letter is there in between the words, and when you are reading the sentence, it is creating an effect. You'll come to know about that. Okay, once I'll tell you. I told in one of the stanzas earlier. So what is the explanation here? So while all of them were making fun of the dragon, they heard a sound of someone entering the house. That is what the nasty sound, and that was. 
a bad sound all right or an unpleasant sound that is what we read when they looked towards the window they saw a pirate climbing up the wall so there was a pirate there was a person who was now trying to attack okay there uh, attack them so now the very pirate was climbing up the wall the dog barked at him growled basically means the dog now barked at him and the kitten meowed to him again sound belinda cried who okay this has been given here in a uh, single inverted comma to show that all of them were scared of the pirate okay all of them were scared these sounds were being made by them in order to show that they were being scared all right is that clear? Window is used as window. Right? Now see, rhyme scheme again here is A, A, B, B. Consonance is now there. What is consonance? Consonance is the repetition of the consonant sound in between the words. All right. Uh, and here, what do we see? Suddenly, suddenly, they heard a nasty sound. Okay? So here we are coming up with the S sound. Now, onomatopoeia is their use of the sound words to create a dramatic effect. What is that? Mustard, growled, meowch, cried, ink, and she said, ooh. Okay, so these are the sound effects that we see here. And poetic licenses, again, their window has been returned as window in order to create rhyme. That is in order to create the musical effect. Is that clear, everybody? Right? Yeah. Now, stanza 8. Pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right, and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright. His beard was black, one leg was what? It was clear that the pirate meant no good. Pistol is handgun. You see that here he had what? Like he had a lot of things with him. And cutlass is a short sword with a curved blade. So this is what he had here. If you guys can see the picture which is right in front of you, this is what he had all right just a moment guys yeah this is what he had in his hand right this was in another hand then we saw the leg all right and the appearance was really very bad okay so now what do we see yes denson the very uh, rhyme scheme is same yes corby you're right winda is really and trulio so what exactly is the explanation here everyone the poet describes okay what exactly the poet is doing here the poet describes the appearance of the pirate which is again very important all right he says that the pirate was holding handguns in both his hands and had a little sword too and he was holding his sword with his teeth he had a black beard and his one leg was made up of wood this means that though the pirate was disabled person but still he was frightening frightening means that he was terrible looking okay uh, he was terrible looking he was uh, terrible looking and he was threatening okay and he was threatening the other characters and how do we come to know that all of them were being threat uh, threatened because of the noise that they made because of the sound that they made they growl okay they 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 growl and then uh like uh, belinda also said oh okay so moreover he intended to harm them that is so clear that he was there in order to harm them now we are moving ahead. Rhyme scheme is again same. A, A, B, B. Right, bright, wood, good. Alliteration again is there. Beard was black. Burr sound is there. Okay. And he held his H, 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 her sound. Imagery is there. An image is created about the appearance of the pirate. So like when I am describing you a character by saying he was wearing a long pair of trousers with white shoes, was carrying a sword in his hand. So the image is simultaneously created in your mind. So that is why we have got imagery here. Alrighty. Intended means it was meant. Okay. It was meant that he wanted to do it. He meant to harm them. He meant to murder them. He meant to kill them. Okay. Now we are moving ahead to the next one. Stanza 9. Belinda paled. Okay. And she cried, help, help. But mustard fled and a terrified yelp. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household and little mouse blinked strategically mouse hold. Okay. So pale basically means, yeah, pale basically means when you are turning yellow due to fear. Yelp means a short sharp cry. Okay. Showing that you are scared. And trickle means run. Hair trickle means to run. And strategically is planned. And mouse hole means it is the hole where the mouse lives. All right. Please remember the meanings of all the words. They are very, very important. 
all right so now let's move ahead explanation when all of them saw the pirate they got frightened all right belinda was so frightened that she turned yellow how why with uh, why did she turn yellow she turned yellow due to fear and she started crying for help monster the dog started crying for help too the kitten ink ran down towards the bottom of the house as if uh, he had already planned for it okay strategically mouse hole basically means that the uh, the very uh, sorry uh, strategically basically refers to the very fact that something is planned and the mounds ink ran into his little household in order to save himself so everybody acted how everybody was acting as a coward now earlier they were saying that they they can like chase the uh, they can hunt the lions and they had the strength as that of like a group of bear right but now they had no courage when they saw the pirate all right is that clear <coughs> if you'll ask in the context of difference between pirate and percival but there is no uh, like why would any be anybody be talking about the difference between percival and pirate there is no difference as such hey Sri Lalita. now literary devices rhyming scheme a a b b help yelp household mouse hold okay transferred epithet terrified yelp now this is important understand here it says terrified yelp okay now you know terrified yelp yelp what do you mean by yelp i said a short a sharp cry so here what do we see that mustard okay now here we are saying that the cry was terrified all right what is transferred epithet guys when we what do you mean by transferred epithet anybody can you please give me the meaning because we did that uh, this in our term one as well what do you mean by transferred epithet this is one of the very important figures of speeches, everybody. What does this mean, everyone? Come on in the comment section. Yes. Everybody, come on. Okay, see, uh, nobody is telling me transferred epithet is like when we are using one adjective in order to describe something. Okay, but it has been shifted to other thing. So here in when it says but mustard fled with a terrified yelp. So here in the word that is coming up is terrified. All right, cry. So you are saying that the cry was terrified, but it was not cry that was terrified. It was actually mustard okay mustard was actually crying so here we have transferred the very adjective all right we have transferred the very adjective to this expression instead of mustard so you have to keep that in your mind all right is that clear okay okay so here we go now repetition help help the two words are being repeated poetic license again we see mouse hold has been used in order to rhyme with household so there you will see the poetic license running throughout the poem here is that clear to everybody yes see i told you terrified all right i told you terrified cry okay so now you are saying that cry was terrified it was in the case okay it was not the case it was mustard all right it was mustard who was actually making the terrified cry so here in the term cry has been used in the context of terrified and not mustard that means the very uh, title has now been shifted is that making sense is that clear yelp is shouting Moving ahead to the next answer, but up jumped Custard, snorting like an engine, clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon, with a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm, okay, he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm, very important, okay, so what are we here, are we talking about everybody, herein we see that snorting means making a certain explosive sound through one's nose, so now dragon was in the picture and he was trying to uh, like uh, protect all of them and he was so very right about that as in like he got into the action now okay 
So clashed is like fort. Dungeon basically refers to an underground prison. Clatter clack means sound of hard object falling on each other. Then jangling squam means sound of hard object falling on each other. Robin is a bird. Okay, so now here this is very important. Let's see that what exactly is the explanation that's coming up. All right. Now we see, what do we see? Hey, Hatiba, good afternoon, good afternoon. Now let's see. When all the other characters that were earlier defined as very brave got frightened, the dragon did the most unexpected thing. He jumped onto the pirate and made such a strong sound with his nose as if the engine was producing a sound. And it is literally important to understand. Not only this, he hit his tail on the ground with great force that it produced a heavy sound of metal being rubbed against each other in the underground prisons. He attacked the pirate just like Robin Bird that attacks the worms. Like Robin Bird attacks the worms in order to gulp it up, right? In order to eat it. Okay, similarly, he attacked that pirate in such a manner as if the dragon had a plan to eat it, which is ultimately going to happen. All right, is that clear? Yes, is that clear? Okay. Vengeance that I mean a uh, vengeance is like when you are going to take uh, the revenge that is badla okay that is the thing all right it is just a gif okay don't get too much into it all right is that clear to everybody yes guys is that making sense is there any doubt so far anyone does anyone have any doubt so far so just please let me know about this and now we are moving to the next thing that is literary devices. Rhyme scheme is again same engine dungeon squirm worm. Similarly is there sound of a dragon is compared with sound of engine. Snorting like an engine and clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. Dragon's attack on pirate is compared to robin bird like a robin at a worm okay then we have got onomatopoeia usage of the sound words to create the dramatic effect clatter clank and jangling keep it in your mind then we have got imagery the attack by the dragon is expressed in a way to make an image in our minds so please make it so clear to, uh, to everyone i i mean i hope that this is clear to everybody yes is that making sense to everyone yeah alliteration is also there that's right avnish that's very right is that clear now the next stanza we are left with last three stanzas after that we are gonna have menti stanza 11 the pirate gaped at belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon he fired two bullets but they didn't hit and custard gobbled him everywhere bet gabe is stared with mouth wide open gulp is to swallow grog is referring to a drink Flagon is a container made or silver, sorry, made of silver in which drink is sorted. So you need to remember the meaning of these words, okay? Very important, okay? Gobble is swallowed hurriedly, hurriedly, okay? Taste, 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 jaldi, jaldi. All right, is that clear, everybody? Is that clear? So what do we really see that here? We see that Robin at a worm, right? Robin, so the pirate, Robin like a, uh, like a Robin at a worm okay so that is also like similarly here now we are moving ahead the pirate got so shocked by the dragon's reaction that he opened his mouth wide with shock to gather some strength he drank some alcohol from a container in his pocket okay so why did he do that you know like he was so scared at that moment that he had to take out the drink that was there in, in the container and then he said that uh, like it was uh, basically alcohol all right it was basically alcohol all right is that clear what uh, explanation are you talking about gps we already did that okay question number 10 i already did that okay you were not listening i guess now moving ahead now this so after gathering some courage he fired two bullets on the dragon but he missed it okay that is dragon didn't catch it and then custard the dragon ate every bit of this fierce looking fierce is like very different looking okay very angry looking pirate all right moving ahead literary devices rhyme scheme a a b b alliteration gulp some grog okay g sound then we have imagery they have shown the reactions and actions made by the parrot on seeing the dragon that is where comes your imagery again all right is that making sense to everybody is that making sense to everyone yes 
Here we go. Grog, I told you. Grog refers to the drink. I told this to you, right? Grog refers to the uh, drink. And flagon is basically the container. Okay. Pocket flagon basically it refers to the container. Alright. Now let's move ahead everyone. We are moving to the next one. And what does it talk about? Let's see. Stanza 12. Belinda embraced him. Mustard licked him. No one mourned for his pirate victim. Ink and blink in glee did gyrate around the dragon that ate the pirate. So embrace means to hug. Moan basically means to feel sorrow for the death of someone. Victim means sufferer. Glee means delight. And gyrate means dance. Okay, so keep this in your mind. It's very important. All right. Now let's see. When the pirate was dead, Belinda hugged the dragon. All right. When the pirate was dead, Belinda, what did Belinda do? Belinda hugged the dragon and mustard licked him. So now they were showing some kind of positive response towards him. And no one was sad for the death of the pirate. They were all happy because they were really scared. Everybody went to their respective places. Both Ink and Blink were running around the dragon in happiness. So here the poet says that all the characters were happy and they were showing their gratitude towards the dragon as he had saved them. Are you understanding this everyone? Are you all understanding this guys? Are you all understanding this? Everybody. Is that making sense to everyone? Yes, guys. Are you all understanding this? So, here the poet says that all the characters were happy and they were showing their gratitude towards the dragon as he had saved them. Everyone. Yes, kindly give a thumbs up in the comment section. I can understand that. Yeah, Amanda is already done. All right. So, this is the right answer. Here we go. This is the right answer. All right, here we are. Embrace is to hug. Moon is to feel sorrow for the death of someone. Victim is the sufferer. All right, glee is the delight. And then we have got the other thing that is gyrate is to dance. That is danced. Is that clear to everybody? Yes, right. Now we are moving to the rhyming scheme. Here we go. What is the rhyme scheme, everyone? Here we go. Okay. So now we are moving to the next thing. Here we go. Alrighty. Next thing that we are moving ahead for. Here we are. Let's see. Okay. Rhyme scheme. A, A, B, B. Alliteration. Glee. Did. Uh, gyrate. So, G sound that we are here talking about. And assonance is there. Use of vowel sound. O. Okay. No one moaned for. All right. So, the O sound here is very right. Use of vowel sound. I. Ink. Blink. In glee. Ended. Use of vowel sound. A. That ate the pirate. Okay. So, A sound again is there. So, make sure everybody that whenever you guys are looking into this form, you are remembering all the things so clearly. It's really important. Is that making sense to everybody right there? Yes. Is that making sense? Right now, we are moving to the next thing. Alrighty. Now, let's uh, move to the very last tensa, everyone. And let's have a look at this. Like, what exactly this tensa is going to talk about. But presently, I have spoke little dog mustard. I have, uh, I had have been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. And up spoke ink and up spoke blank. We had, uh, like, we had have see, been three times as brave, we think. And Custard said, I quite disagree that everybody is braver than me. Flustered basically means upset or confused. All right. Is that clear? Now, let's move ahead. After they thank and show their love towards the dragon, they changed their mind. They were reminded of how they used to make fun of the this coward dragon and now they were all praising him. So, at once the dog said that it was just because of some confusion that he wasn't able to do anything. Otherwise, he would have been twice as brave as Custer. So, here comes the hypocrisy. Alright, here comes the hypocrisy. 
okay that they are being hypocrite uh, like in hindi we say dogle like they have two faces all right so now we see both ink and blink also said that they would have been three times braver than custard and to this the dragon said that he fully agreed to this or uh, that all of them were more powerful and braver than him so that is where your poem ends and what are the literary devices here nothing just the rhyme scheme a a b b that's it how we end this particular poem everyone all right is that making sense to everyone now everyone just join in your quiz as quick as you all can the code is given right in front of you which is 5019 everybody join in all right so we are uh, the poem is finished everyone join in for the very quiz okay just be quick uh, flustered is confused okay flustered basically means confused all right here we go yes everyone be quick guys Alrighty, here we are. Everything has been done, Suman. Nothing has been left. The poem has been completed, okay? Here we are. Come on, everybody. Just move ahead as soon as you can. All right, people, come on. Okay, let's go ahead with the very first one. And what does it say? All right, who mourned over the death of the pirate? Everybody. Who mourned over the death of the pirate? Blink, custard, ink, or none. What exactly is the right answer for this one? A, B, C, or D. What exactly is the right answer? A, B, C, or D. A, B, C, or D, everyone. Time is up. Okay, none. That's very right. Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Who all are there on the leaderboard? Let me have a final look. So, we have got Aditya. And let's see who all would be there. And let me have a final look at it. Okay, so Aditya at the first position, then Zed, then we have Prakar, Radhima, Skit, Sumbul, Unati, Riya, Sri Lalita, and Vodgood. Now we are moving to the next question. Let's have a look at the question number two. And here we go. Alrighty, let's see what does it talk about. Alright, who was called coward? Blank, Custard, Ink, or Belinda? Who was being called coward? What is the right answer for this? A, B, C, or D? What is it, everybody? A, B, C, or D? What is the right answer? Custard. Very good. Now, I'm moving to the next question, guys. I'm going to show the leaderboard right, out, uh, 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 right at the end. Question number three on your screen and here we are. Who was mustard? Who was mustard, guys? A, B, C or D? Who was mustard? Ten more seconds for everybody right there. Who was mustard? What exactly is the right answer? Okay, and now we are moving to the next one. And let's have a look. What does it talk about? Okay, so, okay, not this, but the question. Alrighty, question number four on your screen and here we go. What does it say? Where did Belinda live? Where was she living? In a little white house, in a little uh, yellow house, in a little gray house, in a little pink house. Very good. 26 students have given the right answer. Now we are moving to the next question. Question number 5 on your screen. Let's have a look. What does it talk about? What did Custer do to the pirate? Ate him, scared him away, held him hostage or none of these. What is the right answer?
Okay, very good. Now let's move ahead, everyone, to the next question. We are halfway through our menti. Question number six on your screen. And who did Belinda use to tease? A, B, C, or D? Okay, six more seconds for everyone right there. Here we are. Let's go ahead. Next one. Next question. Question number seven on your screen. And here we go. What all does the dragon possess? A, B, C or D? What is the right answer? Very good. That's right. Now we are moving to the next question. Question number 8 on your screen. Question number 8 on your screen everybody. 10 more seconds and here we go. Right, that's right. Now the next question, question number nine on your screen. Timid is like lacks courage. What was the name of the black kitten? A, B, C or D? Okay, very good. 20 second or uh, 22 students, you are right about that. Now we are moving to the next question. Question number 10 on your screen and here we go. What does it talk about? What did the dragon cry for? A, B, C or D, everybody. What is the right answer? very good everyone that's right let's have a look at the leaderboard finally we are done with our quest so zay then we have romani and then aditya then prakar ria neharika prakriti jatan radhima and Korvi. Alrighty, people so that's pretty good very good zay you did it so well so everyone make sure that you are understanding the poem carefully and you're reading it again on your own and if there seems to be any issue just let me know about this all right and you can ask me the question anytime if you have any kind of an issue moving to our okay guys sorry we were uh, left with the very last tensor okay i'm really sorry for that coming to this tensor again which says this okay this is basically the uh next 14 stanza that we have got yeah we did the 13 stanza and then the 14 stanza belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little gray mouse and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon and a really truly a little pet dragon belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blank chase lions down the stairs Mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage, but Custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. So what do we see that at last what is happening everybody? The poet used the same lines again to show that after this terrific episode in which the dragon was the hero where all the other characters will undermine him by saying that they were more powerful than him and could have handled the situation in a much better way. The poet says that the life started again in the same manner. So there we come, God guys, there comes, all right, there comes what, here basically comes the very uh, situation wherein we see that the life is very same as it started right in the beginning. All right, is that making sense to everybody? right so belinda still lives in the little white house with the like egg blank mustard and custard and all of them are very brave whereas the dragon is still a coward who always wants to have a safe cage is that clear to everybody so the very literary device we have got is refrain repetition of the sentence again and a really truly and repetition is there stanza has been repeated this is basically a repetition is that clear they forget about the bravery of custard good so we are done with the poem i hope everything is really understandable to everybody and now coming to an academy subscription features i would really like to show to everyone right there 
as for so yeah you're right about that yes 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 corby so we see that we get to learn life from the comfort of your home everyone we have got amazing features you all can go ahead with anything that suits you the best unlimited access to all the courses top educators of india on one single platform regular doubt clearing and answer writing sessions would be there exhaustive coverage of the syllabus mentorship and guidance would be there study material in the form of pdf practice test life test studies and batch courses so you guys would have daily practice sections weekly mock test series live quizzes daily mcq and subjective test series okay so we have got different monthly plans go ahead with any plan that suits you the best guys be it 48 months 42 months 36 months 24 months 18 months 15 12 9 6 or 3 PSH 10 is the code guys make use of this code it will give straight forward 10% discount and will make your life super duper easier as well you guys can go ahead with this for sure all right just consider meeting us on the platform wherein you'll be getting good amount uh, of uh, uh, where, uh, wherein you'll be getting good amount of concentration as in good amount of advice and good amount of interaction as well so for all the 90s we came up with the luxury term 2 batch for all the subject which started on 10 gen and achievers batch for all the subject uh, started on 17 gen wherein i am dealing uh, wherein i am actually dealing with uh, your uh, english literature so all the 90s you all can definitely be a part of this batch and the 10th is you guys can just impart the information to your friends for this to all your juniors for this once you go we are done with menti my dear and now upcoming batches for all the 10th is we started with achievers batch for all subjects on 10th and the luxury term to all subjects uh, started on 17th chain everybody kindly enroll for sure Coming to the Bugs Bounty, it's an uh, amazing thing. It's an opportunity for all the learners to report any inappropriate content in the video. Be the first one to report a particular issue to claim your prize. Report any inappropriate content using the form which is given in the description below. Okay, and we are back with an Academy Combat Scholarship Test for success in CBSE Class 9 and 10. Free registration is there. Combat is available in both English and Hindi. 30 questions would be there in 45 minutes. Detailed video solution for each question. Medals for top 3 rankers and merit certificates for top 25 rankers went from a scholarship pool of rupee. 1 crore enroll right away every Sunday. 11 a.m. is the timing. PSH 10 is the code. Make use of this for your good everyone. Rank 1 to 3 will get 1 year plus subscription. Rank 4 to 10, 75% scholarship. Rank 11 to 50, 50% scholarship. Rank 51 to 150, 25% person scholarship now rewards were to be one crore for everyone when up to 100 percent scholarship medals for top three rankers and merit certificates for top 25 rankers this is for class 9 and 10 every sunday it is psh 10 is the code now rank one gold medal plus merit certificate rank two silver medal plus merit certificate rank three bronze medal plus merit certificate now we are back with Prodigy as well. An Academy presents Prodigy for classes 7 to 10 learners win scholarship and prizes. While testing your knowledge and mental ability, enroll for free Gen 23, Gen 29, Feb 6, Feb 13, 12 to 1 is the timing. For more details, you all can click the link in the description below. Alrighty. Manza, okay. My Bezon, the wonderful, okay. Mind blowing, amazing, and wonderful session. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Karvi. The next session is going to be on Friday now. All right. An Academy Prodigy Scholarship Test. It is for classes 7 to 8 and 9 to 10. Mental Aptitude, Verbal Ability, Journal Science and Logical Reasoning is the syllabus. Sunday, Jan 23rd, 12 to 1. Saturday, Jan 29, 12 to 1. Sunday, Feb 6, 12 to 1. And Sunday, Feb 13, 12 to 1. This is basically what is going to be for your good. All right. Exciting rewards in every test is the test on 29th, Jan and 13th February. Win a 20 like college grant rank 1 macbook air rank 2 3 apple iphone rank 4 5 apple ipad rank 6 to 40 amazon echo dot and rank 41 to 100 amazon vouchers rank 1 to 100 100 percent scholarship sorry 1 to 10 100 percent scholarship rank 11 to 25 75 percent scholarship rank 26 to 150 percent scholarship rank 101 to 225 percent scholarship and rank 201 to 500 will get 15 percent scholarship so CBC students for classes 6 to 12 offer for plus and iconic subscribers offer is ending on 31st gen and for plus uh, like plus subscription for 12 months and above you'll buy it if you'll buy it you'll get three months extra for k12 subscription for free and if you go ahead with six months uh, sorry if you go ahead with buying iconic subscription for 12 months and above you'll get six months okay for creative corner subscription it's free so flat 10 percent discount on purchasing plus an iconic subscription for any duration it's valid for first 500 subscribers all right so be a in that list everyone this is literally going to be amazing in well okay okay all right people so we are going to like uh corby the next topic is going to the making of a scientist 
okay now coming to your iconic subscription everyone herein you will have personal mentor one-on-one -on -one interaction would be there live doubt solving sessions would also be there weekly reports would be there wherein we'll be telling you like how you need to go through your week or how you went through your week and what all are the other things that you should be keeping in your mind we are supposed to connect with your parents too and like we will do that and study planner would be there and all the benefits of an academy subscription would also be a part of your iconic subscription now coming to your uh, iconic uh, pricing we have got different monthly plans so you all can go ahead, ahead with any plan that suits you the best 48 months 36 months 24 months 18 months 15 months 12 months 9 months 6 months or 3 months psh10 is the code my dear make use of this code this will give you straight forward 10 percent discount and will make your life super duper easier as well so go ahead with this for your good so that you can score really good marks okay and being your educator being your well-wisher i would really like to tell you all please try to go ahead with a uh, uh with a longer tenure okay long tenure basically because that really helps okay now an academy free special class features live real-time interaction using chat and emojis is there you all can ask the questions using the question tab live poll options for quiz would be there poll leaderboard you all can compete with your friends as well all right so special class is going to be there guys this is the schedule on 20th that is tomorrow we are going to deal with the ncrd questions as well as the extra questions from this perm then on 22nd we are going to deal with the making of a scientist on 23rd we are going to have a mega poll on grammar for term 2 so be right there don't miss that out all right people i'll catch you all soon now thank you everyone i hope that you all love the session do not forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends if you are new to the channel then kindly subscribe the channel take care everyone